Yeah, and like it does, and like you know, there's nothing wrong with going back and like reading that and letting yourself feel good about it. You know, like <laughs> like look at your accomplishment and like I'll do that. I'll go I'll go read over those. I'm like, man, that's so cool. You know, like it's so cool that it's it's connecting with people. And that's I don't think that's an egotistical thing. You know, I think it's just a you know look at the fruit of your labor. You know, look at look at what you're doing. Look at what you've done. Look at how it's impacting people. Um, you know, I think that's why, like, in my office, like, I have, well, the most important picture are the pictures of my little boy, Kai, obviously, but, you know, to this side of the wall, off screen, because it's not as important, but it's, you know, it's like my, you know, the degrees I, I got, you know, like, my master's and stuff, like, sometimes I'll just look at it, and I'll be like, man, I did that, you know, <laughs> just like a, it's just like a nice mental reminder of, like, okay, I can accomplish, like, pretty big tasks, I can do certain things, because, especially as an achiever, I think, you're always on to the next one. You're always, you know, okay, now I got to do this. And, and then I did this. And it's like, remember your wins. I think that's really important. You know, remember where you won so that you can keep on winning because you know it's possible. You know, so if you're always looking at like the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and you didn't pay attention to any stuff, like you might move forward without realizing the strength that you already got. <laughs> you know, like you have to remember your wins. So I think that's a really, you know, obviously that's separate of marketing, but it's just a... I think it's a self-improvement <laughs> technique. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. And I have another author with me today with seven books. I have seven podcasts. Mark has seven books. So we have that in common, uh, the number seven at least. Uh, Mark is here to talk about his recent book, Dads Kiss Your Sons. And Mark also helps authors. So if you're listening going, I need help, Dave. I need somebody who knows what they're doing. With seven books, Mark can help you. So, Mark, welcome to the podcast. Nice to have you here. Hey, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Excited to talk to you and the listeners. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> seven books, Mark. Okay, talk a little bit about the seven. Can you give us a kind of an overview of what you've done in the past? And then we're going to jump yeah. in more about your most recent book. Definitely. Yeah. So my first three books sucked. They're terrible. Um, <laughs> they're embarrassing to look at. So, <laughs> you know. Um, some people have debuts that hit New York Times bestsellers and but most don't. So keep keep that in mind. The the um the standard is not that, you know, to mm. to go to blow up right off the bat. So uh yeah, my first three, you know, I I've been writing since I was a kid. You know, I, I would write short stories, I would write poetry, uh different things to, you know, sort of escape escape my broken and shattered childhood. Mm. <laughs> so um, and then I started singing in a band and I did all the lyrics. So, well, most of them, I wrote about 95% of the lyrics from, for the band that I was in. It was a heavy metal band. And, um, you know, so I was the lyricist there and, uh, just the yeah, writing's always kind of been in me. So once, once the band kind of stopped and I went back to school, uh, to get my, my bachelor's degree, I was 22. Um, I just, I fell in love with reading. I read The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. So that was like the first book I read in my adult life when I was like 22. So I wasn't really a reader up until that point. I read a few Goosebumps books when I was a kid, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I wasn't. Yeah, it's. I guess it is kind of weird to say that. Like I have like seven books, <laughs> you know, written because I was never even really much of a reader. Um, but like I said, I went back to school. I felt head over heels in love with reading. And, um, and writing was always part of me, you know, that was always one of the, my, my giftings and something that I was passionate about and loved. So, um, in like 2016, I wrote my, my first book was meant to be sort of a memoir and, you know, stuff like that. It looks kind of like a picture book really. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's sort of like these like big YouTubers when you go back and watch their first videos from like maybe yeah. eight years ago, it's like, wow, that's not great. Uh, so <laughs> it's, you know, it's kind of similar, um, or like bands that blow up when you listen to like their first demos, it's like, no, it's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, that's my first, at least like three books. Um, and then I wrote, um, I, I started writing a blog like every day. So I sort of challenged myself with being able to write a blog every single day. And I wrote for like 106 days straight. Um, which is probably like nothing. Cause like you hear about these big bloggers out there that wrote like 2000 or something crazy. So, um, whatever, good for them. But <laughs> I wrote, I wrote these blogs every day and it was, it was always like, you know, nonfiction, uh, sort of chase your dreams, self-improvement, self-development type of type of work leadership that I was 
I was really focused on. Um, and then I was like, you know what? It's cool to have this, um, you know, obviously online format, but it would be cool to take this and like put it into a book format as well. So I took all the blogs I'd written and I actually ended up putting it into two books. So I had like blog book volume one and blog book volume two. And I'm proud of those because that was to, to me, that was, you know, a higher caliber of writing. It was writing that I was, you know, ca- I thought I was capable of. So I, I felt good about that book. And then I wrote a book called Carriator and it was my first uh, fiction story. So it was kind of like Angels and Demons meets Chronicles of Narnia. That's probably how I would best wow. okay. <laughs> describe it. Um, and I wrote that and, you know, it was it was cool. It was a fun story, you know. So those three, I feel like, OK, that that was fun. Um, and then this book, Dad's Kiss Your Sons, this has been for me my like, you know, like coup de gras, right? Like my my masterpiece, like, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, and the other books, I never really put any time into marketing them or anything like that, because when you're an author, you don't really care about the business side of it. You just want to write because that's what you do. You're a writer. Um, but unfortunately (laughs) the way it works is if you want to continually write and write more, then you do have to pay attention to the business side of it to try to, you know, um, I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to be successful in writing, you know, there is a business side of it that you have to, you know, acknowledge. And with this book, with that's Kiss Your Sons, I just became a student of uh, marketing and PR work, you know, and I, I still am. And that's that's what I've been doing for at least the last six months is just really studying this. And that's why I'm on, you know, podcasts and I'm, you know, I did some TV with like CBS in Pittsburgh and, you know, just doing a lot of, of stuff like that because I've really invested and it's not even like a ton of money investment. It's just a lot of time investment and studying and doing the right thing. So um, I I really haven't spent a ton of money myself on marketing, but uh, just, you know, like I said, just studying, just studying a lot and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for executing, you know, the strategies and things that I've learned. So sorry, that was a long answer to all the books. (laughs) Yeah. So the whole thing about promoting your book, I hear authors say when they come on the show, they get through the process of writing the book. It's published. They got a copy in their hand. And now it's like they think they're done, but that's only the beginning. Oh, man. Right? So that's, that finish yeah. line, or so you should say finish when you cross the finish. It says start. You're like, oh, it does. I thought yeah. it was done. So yeah, right. there's so much yeah. to do, right? Yeah, writing it is, yeah, finishing it and having your finished product, like, quote, finished product, that's not, it's not done. <laughs> you know, that's, that is, I mean, look at, you know, look at bands. Like, they put an album out. Right. What do they do? What do they do next sure. after the album's out? Yeah, they yeah, tour. Sure, right? so yeah. the, the work just begins and they put tons of blood, sweat and tears into creating this album and perfecting it and studio time and, you know, record this instrument, then this tr- instrument and do all these tracks and then get it mastered. And, you know, what tracks do we keep? Which do we throw away? It's just it's such a long process. And then it begins, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I'm a musician as well. So i one of my seven podcasts, Mark, is the added my playlist podcast where I have people come on and talk about music, oh, cool. whether they wrote the song or they just love the song. And we yeah. talk about that and then we play the song in the podcast so you can actually oh, hear cool. the song. So yeah. just, you know, hey, you know, I've had you on dad's space. You're here now. I'm just going to yeah. kind of cycle you through all my podcasts. Right, that's fine. Yeah, so, yeah, that's fine. I, well, it's funny because I have a song that I did called Kai's song about my little boy. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's sort of this arena rock kind of song. What? So there we go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to talk about that in the future as well. So that's cool. Um, talk a little bit about, from your perspective, how was it important for you as an author to hear back from your audience after they purchased the book through reviews on on sites like Amazon or whatever? Mm-hmm. How, what, what do you do with that information? What does that mean to you as an author? That's a good question. What do you do with that information? Um, so first to get it is you got to tell people that you want it. You know, you have to ask people all the time, please leave a review, please. Yeah. You know, if they text you or message you like a friend or a family member, um, you know, I love the book, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate that. Now can you go tell Amazon that, you know, <laughs> like, here's the link, please, you know, go, go leave this review. And a nice little uh, tip is to, and I actually missed this tip. I have a different thing at the end of my book, but at the end of your ebook, you should put a little link to leave a review on Amazon. So it takes them immediately right after they read the book, right to 
write a review because now they're mm-hmm. fired up. They just finished it. They're pat, you know, they're excited about it or they hate it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, whichever yeah. it is, <laughs> but you give them the option um, to go there and leave a review. So it's, it's hugely important for uh, a few reasons. Um, obviously, you know, did what I write connect, you know, did it hit people where I wanted it to hit them? Did it make them think about the things I wanted them to think about? Is it, is the message that I tried to deliver being delivered and is it being understood and is it being seen and heard? So, you know, you're going to get that from those reviews and ask it. But again, you got to ask people, you know, I think a lot of times it, it's like a sales kind of thing. Like people get really uncomfortable when they start, you know, having to ask for things. But if you don't ask for anything, you're not going to get anything. Right. So, yeah. you know, people aren't just going to like flock to your Amazon and number one, buy your book. And then, you know, even if they are doing that, they're not going to flock to just leave reviews, you yeah. know, so you got to ask for those things. And then what you do with them. So there's, you know, here's like a, a little marketing piece is you could, you know, you can screenshot that you can create flyers that you can use for posts on social media and you can use it to, you know, if you want to run ads, you could do things like that because it shows, you know, you show your book and then you show like five star review and like, you know, what the review is um, when you get, you know, higher, you can try to get higher profile people that are best selling authors or are in a space that you're you know, working in or that you, you're writing in and get them to contribute a blurb. But now you've got some, you know, uh, you're using their name uh, to put on your stuff. So, you know, really, like I said, like, and you don't have to be like a master <laughs> craftsman with like Photoshop or anything. I use Canva. Canva's great. Yeah. I, I suggest like, like, yeah, if, if you're on like a tight budget and you don't want to out, I'm a big fan of outsourcing a lot of things. Um, but I tend not to outsource too much on this piece because Canva is like literally incredible. I think it's like $12 yeah. a month for the pro version. Yeah. And I mean, all their templates, it's like, you just put your pictures in and your words in and it's done, you know? So yeah, you could, you could take screenshots of, you know, these, uh, uh, reviews and post it, And, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot you could do with it, you know, and it, it gives you, um, what's that word? Social proof it gives you that social yeah. proof. So when people go to look, they're like, Oh, well, they're, you know, this, this is legit. This is legitimate. It's, you know, I think that's what we strive for as self-published authors is like legitimacy. Yeah. Um, and maybe we're not, we're kind of shy to admit that or no, I just, just do this for the art, which is that part is true too. Like I said, but for, for those of us that maybe want to make it more of a career, then yeah, we're striving for a little bit of legitimacy. You so know. in legal terms, if we were in the court courtroom right now, this would be me technically leading the witness mm-hmm. because I have up on my screen while we're chatting your book and your reviews, and I want to read a few. Oh, just thanks. See what yeah, people cool. have said, if that's okay. See what I did yeah, there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. sets you up there a little bit. Yeah. Like um, all the things I'm reading, five-star reviews, by the way. So uh, Vicki A. Adams says, a great read. Loved every minute of reading. Check it out. Very well-researched. And so well written. Kudos to the author for the this fantastic and wonderful read. That was Vicky. Thank you, Vicky. That's amazing. Uh, let's do some more. I love these. Let's talk Woody. Maybe from Toy Story. I'm not sure. But Woody <laughs> says, Mr. Craven was, has written an engaging and fresh look at fatherhood with heartful experiences that are relatable and real. A fine read, especially for new dads. That's awesome. See? Yeah. So I love I love hearing these because this is coming from people that have bought the book. They love it. Uh, Nicole says, very inspirational, definitely a must read. Uh, Shannon says, couldn't put it down, inspirational from start to finish. So, yeah, you know, like. That's awesome. That, that's got to mean something, right? Yeah, an and author. like, it does. And like, you know, there's nothing wrong with going back and like reading that and letting yourself feel good about it. You know, like, <laughs> like, look at your accomplishment and like. I'll do that. I'll go, I'll go read over those. I'm like, man, that's so cool. You know, like, it's so cool that it's, it's connecting with people. And that's, I don't think that's an egotistical thing. You know, I think it's just a, you know, look at the fruit of your labor, you know, look at, look at what you're doing. Look at what you've done. Look at how it's impacting people. Um, You know, I think that's why like in my office, like I have, well, the most important pic or the pictures of my little boy, Kai, obviously, But, you know, to this side of the wall off screen, because it's not as yeah. important, but it's, you know, it's like my, you know, the degrees I, I got, you know, like my master's and stuff. Like sometimes I'll just look at it and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I did that. Man, I did that. You yeah. know, <laughs> just like a, it's just like a nice mental reminder of like, OK, I can accomplish like pretty big tasks. I can do certain things because 
especially as an achiever, I think you're always on to the next one. You're always, you know, okay, right. now I got to do this. And, and then I did this. And it's like, remember your wins. I think that's really important. You know, remember where you won so that you can keep on winning because you know it's possible. You know, so if you're always looking at like the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and you didn't pay attention to any stuff, like you might move forward without realizing the strength that you already got. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you have to remember your wins. So I think that's a really, you know, obviously that's separate of marketing, but it's just a, I think it's a self improvement <laughs> technique. So take me into the elevator, Mark. The doors are shutting. I'm meeting you for the first time. I find out you're an author. I ask you about your book. In the time it takes us to go from the ground floor to the second floor and the doors open and we leave, what would mm -hmm. you tell me about your book in that short amount of time that would make me go, this is the book I need? Tell me about Dad's yeah. Kiss Your Sons. That, and that's a good practice because that's very hard to do. So when you you know go to write your description, when which I actually outsourced. <laughs> so. Um, you know, uh, I'll get to that outsourcing important thing too. But, um, yeah, when you, when you try to describe your book in a really quick way, you know, the elevator pitch, uh, to get people interested, that's, it's, it's, it's an important, uh, practice. But I think what I would say is, um, yeah, you know, I just, I, it, however it was brought up, like, yeah, you know, I, I wrote this book and, uh, it hit, it hit number one bestseller in Amazon in several categories, which was really exciting. Uh, it's sort of my story into fatherhood, a lot of the trials that I went through and experienced and, you know, the joys of, of fatherhood. But there's also a lot of science in it because my background is in biology. So I do a ton of research on developmental psychology, developmental biology. And there's a lot of self-improvement techniques in there as well to just, you know, help you become the dad you want to be. But also the science backing it up of what it is that you're doing to become that dad. So that's what the book's about. And then go listen to, Dad, to Dad's Space because we talked a little bit more about the book there as well. So you right, can go yeah, there exactly. or check out the Living Life right. Chapter Podcast. Or, I could, right yeah. or the, the big thing that always gets people is I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't meet my dad until I was 22. And then I lived with him for three years. Great guy. Paid for me to go to school. And then at 25, I found that he wasn't my real dad. And we did a, after we did a paternity test. And then I found out my real dad actually wrestled in the WWF in the 80s. So usually that makes people want to buy the book too. And they're like, wait, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> As a huge wrestling fan from the 80s, yeah, you know, right. Like, that caught me in your bio. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> oh, because yeah. I would go to Buffalo. I live in Canada, I live in Ontario, and I would mm -hmm. drive over to Buffalo, New York, and I went to watch WrestleMania. Oh, and nice. so you see, like, the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk and Randy Savage and all of them, but they would have like Ultimate Warrior wrestle three times in one night, and yeah. like, and they would do all the cameras and stuff, and they would tell us, like, no, no flash photography. But as mm -hmm. soon as the wrestler would come to the stage, but they oh, had these yeah. flashes that were hanging down from the ceiling to make it look like we were taking photos, but we weren't allowed to take photos. Right. I'm like, interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting. So, yeah. and we had to do the intro twice because we weren't loud enough as an audience. So they cut everything and said, okay, let's do it all again. And we're like, okay, wow. yeah. And we're doing yeah. the clapping. Right. I'm like, this is Such television. A, man. Yeah. Tell, yeah. TV. It's there weird. you go. Anyway. So yeah, I, that's now I'm off from a wrestling thing. So, um, that's amazing. Okay. So talk about the book then, Mark, what, who is your target audience? Um, explain a little bit about what you had in mind. Um, as far as who you were writing to, were you writing to a person or were you writing to capture your own thoughts and writing more for yourself in this? Uh, I think, I think both. And then I, I think, um, you know, when you're, when you're doing a book or you're doing a podcast or you're speaking or coaching, you always, you know, one of the big things people always tell you to do is like niche down and, you know, who's your specific uh, readership that you're talking to and things like that. Because it's, you know, people, you get lost in the, well, it's for everybody, you know? And uh, I mean, for my book, yeah, there, you know, this, cause the story is it's, it's an inspirational story, you know, it's, it's, it is powerful. So I really do believe a lot of people can take things from it. So a lot of my, you know, it's called dads kiss your sons, but a ton of my readership um, are, are women, <laughs> you know, and they, they read the book and they're like, I'm obviously not a dad, but this was hugely impactful for me and hugely inspiring to me. So, you know, when I was writing it, especially some of the stories, you know, when I talk about my absolute fear of becoming a dad uh, that, you know, that's, that's definitely, you know, directed in the messages for expectant dads that are just out of their mind terrified to know that they're not alone and that this fear isn't weird 
and to just sit through it long enough to come out on the other side and experience this love that words can't even hope to grasp, you know? So it's, you know, that's speaking to like the fatherlessness in the world, you know, and fear is just such a liar that it, you know, pushes people out and it pushes dads out and it makes them so scared that they, they just want to run and leave because they can't do it. You know, so that part is definitely, you know, for expecting dads where it's like, no, just sit through this long enough to come on the other side and kiss that cute little face that is just going to, you know, <laughs> pull your heart out of your chest. Um, so, you know, I, it, it was, it was to them, but the book is, you know, it's a hard, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a hard question to answer because like I said, there's so much in it that so many can take away from it. Um, you know, that part is obviously specific to expectant dads, but the, you know, broken childhood and, um, you know, broken relationships and just not thinking you're enough or you're qualified to do the thing that you want to do and, you know, coming through adversity and, uh, you know, seeing yourself as more than, you know, you are seeing yourself better and, uh, and achieving better and doing better, you know, that's for everybody. Talk a little bit about the title of the book. How did you settle on that for the uh, the name of your, your book? Yeah, so I and the book was actually initially called Chapter Seven um, because it was my seventh book. I actually went bankrupt, found Chapter Seven bankruptcy. Wow. Um, so there was like you know some play on the title, play on the words a little bit, and you know I knew my story was powerful. I knew you know again not meeting my dad till I was twenty two, and then finding out my real dad was a wrestler. Um, you know, I, I knew the story was powerful singing in a metal band playing, you know, we, we did some pretty big things and, you know, dreams and, uh, you know, all this stuff and then becoming a dad and like that being the greatest experience of my life. So I knew my story, um, I knew it was powerful. I knew there was a lot of, of stuff in it that could help people, but I didn't know what the overall message was. You know, it's kind of like you write a, a great song. I mean, you feel like it's a great song, but you're like, well, what the hell's the title? Like, what's yeah. it, what am I hoping to, you know, in, yeah. in, like, what am, what, what's, what's my theme? Like, why, why am I writing all these stories? Like, why am I talking about all these like storms I went through? Am I just trauma dumping? Am I just putting this out there? Like, look at how bad my life is, but I was able to do something. You know, it just felt like kind of empty. I was like, I don't know why I'm writing this. <laughs> and it, it was actually, um, a friend posted something on Facebook. I don't remember what their post was, but my my comment on the post was dads kiss your sons. So it must have been something about like being a loving father, the importance of that, something, you know, something to that effect. And I said, dads kiss your sons. And it hit me like, you know, a bolt of lightning. I was like, oh, oh, that's the title of the book. Like, that's why I went through everything I went through to come out on this side and to be the dad that I am to Kai and to share that story. Oh, okay. Now I got the title. Now it makes sense. And, you know, dads kiss your sons. Um, it's, you know, even the day and age that we're in now, it's a bit jarring, <laughs> you know, because of this bravado and this, what it means to be a man and, you know, this and that. So yeah, you know, it's like men need to feel okay with just, you know, talking about their feelings and talking about their fears and talking about what scares them and what, what's, what makes them sad. And, you know, like just being open and, you know, allowing this love that you like can't even contain. And the only way you can kind of contain it is you just kiss this little face like a thousand times in a day. Um, like that needs to be encouraged and celebrated. And um, so, yeah, you know, that's where that's that's where it came from. If if that makes sense to anybody. Yeah. And then the <laughs> result, I guess, um, with Kai is his reaction to that love demonstrated to him oh, from yeah. a father figure. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. How's that kind of playing out for Kai and how he grows oh, up? Man, he's he is like such a loving little dude. You know, he's he's two he's two and well, he's almost three. So he's past the two and a half point. But yeah, he's he'll be three in August and he's just, you know, like I said, I mean, <laughs> from the moment that little dude was born, he just has had no say in the relentless barrage of kisses that he receives from me. <laughs> And from his mom and from, you know, his nanny and everybody um, to the point now, it's so cool. Like he'll, you know, he, he's like a toddler and he's, he's like little, I mean, he's still little, but he's like a kid now. He's not a baby. 
Yeah. And, you know, in the middle of like playing with toys or playing with his tablet or doing something, he'll just kind of stop and come over to me and give me like a big hug or he'll give me a big, you know, wet kiss. Um, and, you know, anytime I'm like, I can have a kiss, you know, he puckers his little lips and, <laughs> you know, and he's, <laughs> he's just such a loving little dude. And he, he does that to me. He does it to his mom, his siblings, uh, everybody, you know, he just goes up and hugs them. So I I'm so that's one of the best things that I see in him is he is seeing that it's okay to uh, physically represent how he's feeling, you know, and to him, like, that's just normal. It's normal to hug and it's normal to kiss and it's normal to, you know, let my daddy like, you know, cuddle me and hold me while I'm watching TV or, you know, we're playing a video game and he's just kissing me in the middle, like the whole time and kissing the top of my head. So he, you know, him finding himself, naturally cradled in this you know love is just man it's just so important and I, I say it's important like you have to work at it but that's the thing is like it's just so natural like i don't know what else i would be doing besides kissing him relentlessly yeah <laughs> you know when i'm holding him like there's i don't know there you don't you kind of don't need to be told that if you allow yourself to be how you feel with that little one there's a moment in time like for me i have three grown children and it would be quite awkward for me to go kiss my kids in public and be like, oh, man, that's kind of creepy. What are you doing? Um, yeah. So you have this window of time to demonstrate affection and love and build right. quality foundation for your kids. Yeah. So they understand that kind of love. In mm -hmm. addition to the affection piece, what other things are included in kissing your, your kids and demonstrating love as a parent? That's oh, yeah. from a scientific point of view, helpful mm -hmm. for your children as they grow. Anything else that's part of it? Yeah, well, uh, scientifically speaking, directly to the kissing and hugging, and then I'll get to the next piece, uh, you know, what, what's going on. There's actually something called physiological synchrony, where the same neurotransmitters that are being released in your little one when they're being held and kissed and loved on, uh, like oxytocin, uh, which, you know, gets rid of cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hor uh, hormone and neurotransmitter. So it, it decreases that. Um, oxytocin, like I said, comes in and it's uh, we have serotonin, we have, you know, the, the good, <laughs> uh, the good neurotransmitters and the good chemicals that help with, um, a lot of things, recovery, um, memory, just overall health state, you know? Um, and so the thing, physiological synchrony, so not only is that being released in them when you're hugging and holding and kissing them, but it's actually being released in you as well. So, you know, you have these, this dopamine creates like this cyclic, uh, experience where it's like, I mean, well, obviously <laughs> that's why you have the issues that we have in the world also. But, um, when you're again, hugging, holding and kissing your little one, you know, dopamine's being released, oxytocin's being released, cortisol's dropping, your blood pressure's dropping. You're just finding yourself in an overall healthful state just because you're loving on your little one. The, aside from that, I mean, words. You know, words are just so powerful. There's life and death is in the tongue, you know? Yeah. So over, you know, I, I speak, um, I speak a lot of life over Kai all the time, you know, from, I love you to, um, you know, your, your, your daddy just loves you so much. I just hope you know how much daddy loves you. And, um, you, you know, you're my, you're my best friend. You're my, <laughs> you're the best boy. Um, and you know, I actually, I say a little, uh, a little, um, sort of mantra over him every single night after his bath. So I give him his bath every night and, you know, while he's on my lap and I'm drying him off, I'll, you know, I'll say you're strong, you're safe, you're secure, you're brave, you're blessed and highly favored. You're covered in the blood of Jesus. You're healthy, you're kind, and you're so, so loved. You were born into abundance. You were born into blessing. You are abundant and you are a blessing. And mommy and daddy love you so, so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. I say that to him every single night. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully wow. I don't creep people out with the blood of Jesus thing as yeah. soon as he died for our sins. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I say that to him, like I said, every single night, I didn't read that from anything like that's not scripted. It's in the book, but, um, yeah, I, I say that over him every single night and he, you know, he just kind of looks at me and sometimes he'll smile, he'll kiss me. Sometimes he's whiny and crabby and I'm, st I still say it, yeah. <laughs> you know, cause I believe in the life uh, of the words that we speak over our children. So that's a powerful lesson. Yeah. A very powerful lesson, I think, for any new parent out there to to create those habits at the beginning. Oh yeah, and, be, and that that repetition and showing yeah. up and demonstrating that on a consistent basis. 
Yeah. And that it's, little mantra, yeah. it, it grew, it grew over time, you know? So yeah. at first it was only just like, you're strong and you're safe and you're secure. And now he loves you so much. And then, you know, like I said, the more I'd say that, then I would kind of add a new piece and then I'd add a new piece and now it became what it is right now. So yeah, it's, it's so important. And I've been saying that to him since he was, you know, newborn. I mean, they hear you say like, I love you to them. It's just this weird yeah like yeah. mumble like well what's that mean and then it's followed up with this like warm kiss and they feel yeah. your like you know the bristles of your beard maybe or your yeah, yeah. <laughs> your stubbly chin and you know they're like oh okay when they say this strange mumbling that i hear it's followed with this um compassion this love this experience of oh i'm safe i feel i feel secure yeah. and that's what's also happening too is like when when they feel that um the 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 neural connections in their brains that are being established because 90% of the brain is um, like 90% of the structures of the brain are established in the first three years of life. Right. So those structures are leaning more toward um, coping capacity and, in, and security as opposed to insecurity. So when they feel that they're comforted and that they're loved and things like that, um, they just, they have more, they're more secure. They're, they're able to cope more with an internal stimuli happening because there's a lot of change and growth happening as they're little, little, um, and then external, you know, when they face challenges, Kai is fearless, This, which to a fault, I mean, he, yeah. he is like fearless. He'll climb up my shoulders and do a backflip off him onto the bed. You know, he's, he's a wild little dude, but <laughs> I'd rather him be like that than, you know, insecure and scared. Yeah. So it's amazing. What have you learned about yourself watching Kai and, uh, your parenting and, you as a person um hmm. i guess the you know one of the biggest lessons is i didn't need to have experienced the love that i'm now capable of giving yeah you know more specifically I'm, i didn't need to experience the love of an earthly father to give my son the a father's love you know uh it's all right there for you yeah. immediately you don't realize that until your little ones in your arms but it's there and it's natural and, you know, you're not disqualified. So. Amazing. So I have a couple more things to talk, ask you about. But before we do that, the website for the book and the website for your coaching, I like to kind of talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. um, before we go towards uh, wrapping up in a few minutes. But can you talk about the two, two websites, how they kind of work together and what we find when we come to each? That'd be great. Yeah. So if you just go to dadskissyoursons.com, it... I own both domains, so it actually just turns into successupahead.com. Okay. Uh, okay. But you could just go to dadskissyoursons.com and it'll take you where everything is. Success Up Ahead was the um, coaching that I initially started like years ago. It was actually a, a like math and chemistry tutoring company I started oh. um, in like 2015. But now, it, you know, I kept it and I kept the domain again, just dadskissyoursons.com. And I have, you know, all my blogs are on there. Uh, you know, info about, you know, the book, Dads Kiss Your Sons, the media, social media, connect with me on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, things like that. And um, my coaching is there too. So people can, um, you know, they can schedule coaching uh, right there. The calendar is immediately there. Uh, they can either do a single session. I do have a little package on there. I think it's four and you get one of them. One of them are free uh, if you do the package. So, yeah. And I just, you know, I help a lot of people with, you know, usually like the self-published authors, if they're, you know, trying to um, maybe just first time authors and just getting getting the book written and then, you know, doing a little bit of marketing. I keep my stuff like I keep my coaching like really reasonable because the things I see out there, what people are charging is just like kind of crazy. Right. You know? yeah. It's just really ridiculous. And especially, you know, you can become an Amazon bestseller with a, just a few pretty easy techniques and, um, I, I saw that upwards of like $27,000 for the guarantee to be wow. an Amazon bestseller. So after wow. I just, I read a few, I read some articles and I watched some videos and I downloaded a $97 piece of software and my book hit number one in at least, I think five categories, um, on Amazon. So I didn't spend $30,000, <laughs> you know, I spent $97. <laughs> so, and I, you know, so that's why. You know, I I really kind of point people in the direction of what they need to do, you know, so I'm not doing all this stuff for you. I mean, if if you really, you know, it, it depends on the client or what we're working on, but I'm just I'm just showing you exactly what you need to do and and you do it. You'll you know, you'll you'll make it happen. So that's uh, yeah, that's the coaching. 
Amazing. And so what's it like to work with you when I meet with you for the first time? And walk me through the early times as people are thinking about, yeah, I want to do this, but I'm not sure what it's going to feel like. What's yeah, it, I mean, what, like? you know, we just talk, you know, I want to get to know you a little bit and, you know, what what you think that you're interested in doing. And, you know, and then we just start. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's not. I, I, it's it's like writing a book, especially if you're going self-publishing. And that's what I teach people because I, I didn't go the traditional route. I went self-publishing. Um, you know, so that's what I help people with. I did do a book proposal for this book because I was going to go traditional publishing, but then I switched it up, changed my mind to go back into self. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly simple, like, here's where we're going. You know, here's a nice little goal. You want to hit 300 words a day. Uh, cause that's about the same size as one page in like a normal novel size book. So yeah. it's a cool little goal and you'll tend to surpass it. So you'll feel good about that. Good. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, just establishing, you know, when are you going to write, you know, what's, um, you know, just kind of a timeline, but you know, it, it's to break it down really quick. It's like you bleed all over the page. You just write and you write and you write, and then you finish writing and then you clean up the blood a little bit. And that's by bringing in editing, things like that. And then once that's all done, okay, now you're ready for the cover, the interior design. And this for me was all outsourcing. You know, mm. I didn't do any of that. I like that was, and I did um, crowdfunding for that. You know, I did like a GoFundMe, things like that. So um, this book, I wanted it to be as perfect and as polished as it could be. So I outsourced everything except the writing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there a possibility of an audiobook coming as well? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I just, um, that's that's that is on the docket okay. because with your smoky voice, <laughs> oh man, uh, you would sell a billion copies. Just there telling you, yeah, yeah, thank you. Appreciate and, and it. <laughs> I love hearing an author read their own book because you know what you've written, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of it's gonna you're gonna hear it, right? right? Like, when, you know, where the it. accents are, yeah, you know, like you know what you want to accentuate, and you know, right. the parts that are, yeah, it, you're, yeah, it just I agree, I like hearing when the actual author. It, except for the alchemist, Jeremy Irons read that one, and that's great. Mm. <laughs> so if Jeremy, it's either me or Jeremy Irons. If Jeremy Irons isn't free, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. And when if you talk about Kai, it's going to show that oh, yeah, smile yeah. that you're doing right yeah. now. That smile yeah. is going to show when you're recording. And in the yeah. studio, we know smile when you sing. You can oh, hear yeah. it. You can hear oh, it. Yeah, you can hear absolutely. It. You feel it for sure. Amazing. Okay, Mark. Thank you so much for being on Living the Next Chapter. Um, one last thing from your perspective, there's a new author listening to us right now. They're ready to to take that step and go and do this. Any words of encouragement beyond what we've talked about that would just yeah, get start, them to over that little hurdle of starting? Yeah, just, just start writing, just you know, uh, just, just write. And, you know, don't try your best not to think about the end product as much, you know. Yeah. Um, don't worry about the comma splices. Don't worry about the run-on sentences. Don't worry about the grammar. Just get the words that are in your heart onto the page, bleed all over it, and then we'll yeah. clean it up later. Beautiful. Awesome. Again, Mark, the website? Uh, dadskissyoursons.com. Beautiful. There you go, everyone. Go there. All the links in the show notes. And if you want a little bit more of Mark, we go deeper into Mark's dad story over on Dad Space. So I love having these two podcasts together to share our audiences together and continue the conversation. So Mark, a little behind the scenes for everybody listening. Mark has done two back-to-back -back recordings this morning. Uh, he's he's probably tired, but I really do appreciate the fact that you made time for both of these audiences today, Mark. It's amazing to have you on. And much love to to Kai. And um, again, the smiling picture behind you says it all. What a cute kid. Such thank a great you. kid. So thank you for sharing with us and being a part of the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. And thank you for showing up and you know, doing all this work, too uh this you know this you know these the messages it's important to get out people need to hear this stuff because we need to hear people's stories you know you have a beautiful yeah. story and you and the only reason you have a story is for it to be shared so mm. um you know I'm, I'm so thankful that you've created this platform for people to do just that so that their story can hit and impact the hearts that it needs to impact it's amazing everyone go buy go buy the book dads kiss your sons gift it it's an amazing gift idea Oh, well, that Father's Day is you know up. somebody, if you know, yeah, you know, if someone's going to have a, a newborn in their home soon or something, another idea. There you go. Yeah. Put it, send it out as a copy to that new parent and help Absolutely. them out. It's awesome. Thank you, Mark, for being part of the podcast.
Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Really appreciate you being here and being part of our podcast community. Livingthenextchapter.com is our website. I have a thing I'm going to offer for you as an author, if you're listening, and you're wanting to build your website for your book. I've had so many authors come on and they're struggling in this area. I'd love to help you. All of the websites that I built for my different podcasts, I have experience and I'd love to help you and get you up and running. I can get you the help you with your domain purchase. I can help you with setting up your podcast, making it really simple. And if you love Canva, we can even set it up on Canva for you and you can do all your own maintenance. You don't need to hire anybody. We'll help you get set up. So if that interests you as an author and you want a website for your book, let me know. We can do this. I can help you. Livingthenextchapter.com is the website for the podcast. You can find me there. I'd love to help you reach out. Let me know if I can be of assistance in any way. And thank you again for listening to Living the Next Chapter. Today is where your book begins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. MindShift Power Podcast, the podcast for teenagers and those who work with them. There's a huge problem in America today. There's a very large disconnect between teenagers and the adults who work with them. I'm looking to bridge that gap with real, raw, honest conversation, not held back by the chains of political correctness. You cannot solve a problem you do not understand. Want to understand teenagers today? Listen to this podcast. This podcast is for teens in the U.S. and Canada. To learn more, go to FatimaBay.com slash podcast, or just look for MindShift Power Podcast on any listening platform. I look forward to you being a faithful listener. <laughs>